So today we're going to look at optimization again, but this time we're going to take a look at three-dimensional figures. So here's the scenario. The Acme, the Acme Box Company designs and manufactures boxes, cans, and other containers. They've been hired to design a box to hold a thousand centimeters cubed of popcorn kernels. Note this is popcorn kernels. Um, and the box can have different dimensions. And again, we will want to look at what would be the best scenario. If they're designing these boxes, we want to look at the scenario that would have actually the lowest surface area because we want to, they want to obviously use the minimum amount of cardboard to create these boxes. So here we have all kinds of different scenarios. I've of course given you the length and the width and you need to calculate the height. They all have a given volume of a thousand centimeters cubed. So hopefully you can figure out how we're gonna calculate these heights. We're gonna take the volume and we're gonna divide it by the length and we're gonna divide it by the width, right? Because length times width times height equals the volume. Okay, so let's start with one, not the first one. It's always better to start with a different one. So if we look at this one here where we have a length of one and a width of two, we know that we're going to find the height by taking a thousand divided by two, and that's going to give us a height of 500. Okay, I'll fill this one in two above. It would have been a thousand. Okay, now think about how you would calculate the surface area over here. Very important. Okay, for the surface area, you obviously have to do length times width plus width times height plus length times height all times two, right? So you're going to use your formula to fill in the surface area here. So the first one, you're going to get a surface area of 4,002. So for the next one here, if I start multiplying the dimensions, I'm going to get 1,000. I'm going to get 500, so that's 1,500, and I'm going to get 2, so 1,502, 1,502, and then that's doubled, right, for surface area, so it's going to end up being 3,004. And now what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video, and I want you to try and fill in a couple more rows of this table, okay? You can choose any ones you want, but I want you to pause and make sure you can, even on a scrap piece of paper, that you can get a couple of these values before I complete the whole table for you. Okay, so here we have the entire table now filled in, and of course I want you to take a look at um, which box would use the least amount of cardboard, in other words, has the minimum surface area, and of course you can see that it's this row right here, okay, and what do you know as a continuation from yesterday, what would you tell me about this shape? Okay, what would you notice about this shape? You would actually call this rectangular prism not really a rectangular prism. It's a special rectangular prism. It's a cube. Okay, so like we said, of course, then this is the shape of a cube. And the cube actually has a couple special formulas, just like we did yesterday. The volume of a cube, instead of writing length times width times height, we can write side cubed, because all the sides are the same. And the surface area of a cube, we actually just have six sides that are all the same. They're all S times S, or length times length, or whatever you want to call it. So, And there's six of them added together. So it's actually 6s squared. So I want you to make note of that, okay? Now, why do you think it would be important to minimize the surface area? Like we said, this would use the least amount of cardboard, and obviously then this would be more economical and more ecological, right? Better for our environment and would, of course, save a company money. So these would be the reasons why we would want to optimize or minimize the surface area, okay? Okay, now just like we did in two dimensions, let's ask ourselves the question, suppose the company wanted to redesign the package into a cylindrical container. What relationship must exist between the diameter and the height in order to minimize the surface areas? So the question is, what would this sort of cube-like cylinder actually look like? Okay, so obviously if it was cubed, then this dimension would equal that dimension. So in other words, the height of the cylinder would equal the diameter of the cylinder, right? Those two dimensions would be the same. And another way of saying that then would be that therefore the height 
is actually equal to two times the radius, okay? And this is sort of our important relationship that we're gonna use to actually see if we can minimize the surface area even more using the same shape, using the same volume of this container. Okay, so would the company be able to save more money with this design? I think you can guess that the answer is going to be yes, but now let's go through the math that kinds of that show that demonstrates this. Okay, so I want to take a look at the volume of a cylinder formula. Okay, we know that the formula from your formula sheet is pi r squared h. Okay, but if we use this special cube like cylinder where h is equal to 2r, then I want to actually replace it in the formula. Okay, I want to replace the h with 2r. So that comes down and gets replaced in there. And now I want you to use your algebra skills to simplify this formula. Okay, look at what we have. We're going to bring the 2 to the front because it's always good to put the coefficients in front. We have pi and we actually have r cubed. So this is actually a special formula for a cylinder for the optimal cylinder, for the cylinder that has the least possible surface area. In other words, uses the least cardboard or would be the cheapest, okay? And let's look at what the dimensions of this cylinder would be if we indeed use this formula, okay? So using this formula now, we know that our container has a volume of 1,000, and we can substitute this in, and now we can solve for the dimensions. In other words, we can solve for this R right here, and then we can find out the height of the cylinder and all the dimensions we need to find the surface area. So we're gonna do some opposite operation work here. We're gonna take 1,000, and we're gonna divide it by two and divide it by pi, okay, to give us our R cubed value, and we're gonna punch that into our calculator. And I believe when you punch that in, please do it with me to make sure that you can get this number and you know how to punch that in. We get 159 with all kinds of decimal points. I'm just gonna write them down so you can see them. Okay, so that's what R cubed equals. Now, in order to get R by itself, we're gonna to have to do opposite operations. We know that we, when we have squared up here, we take the square root to get this number over here. So similarly, when we have a cubed, we're actually gonna take what's called the cubed root. And you're gonna to need to find that button on your calculator. Okay, it looks like this with a little three in it. Okay, and you're gonna take the cube root of 159.1549. I'm just keeping as many decimal places to be as accurate as possible. And you should get a number like 5.4193 for your radius. So in other words, your radius is 5.4. Okay, so therefore then our radius is 5.4. That would of course mean that the, our height is two times the radius, right, equal to the diameter. So that would actually mean we have a height of 10.8. And of course, these are all centimeters. Okay, so that's how we actually find it. Now let's see if that surface area actually is minimized. Remember, our surface area of a cube was 6,000. So if we just plug this into our surface area formula really quickly, okay, we can use our normal formula, which is 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. Okay, we're just going to plug in these new special dimensions. So we have 5.4 squared plus 2 times pi times 5.4 times 10.8. And if you take a minute and please punch that into your calculator, it looks like you get a number of 553.6 centimeters squared. And of course, this is less surface area than our 600 centimeters squared cube. So this would actually save the company even more money. And that's what I want you to make note of is this special cube-like cylinder would actually save us even more money than the cube. So the cube is better than any rectangular prism and then a cube-like cylinder is even better than that, okay? And we'll work with this formula tomorrow. Thanks.